Hey there, gamers. Welcome back to Banished Souls Cryptic Gaming here. Hope you've been having a wonderful week. So, I want to talk a few things about some of the new ships, the exciting stuff that we're seeing in Season 2, going over ship upgrades and uh, unlocking the bark in the pass and stuff. Now, I've noticed there's a lot of questions coming in from new players who are kind of like, wow, this seems like a lot of stuff. I haven't even got to that yet. So, I want to start with just a quick introduction for those folks who... Or just coming into the game maybe you want to learn what this game is about you're going to start off on a dow which is basically this crappy little boat behind us here all right you're going to start on that and you're going to be building into ships and you're going to have what they call a small hole ship and you're going to have to decide what play style you want at this point when we get there and i'm going to explain that to you so this is an mmorpg pirate naval game all right, now, if you're familiar with any kind of RPG roleplay games and stuff like that, you have a base character and then you build those stats off of it. Well, the way that you build stats in this game is through boats. This character is mostly just an avatar to move around on islands. It does no interaction other than, it, you know, he, you could go pick up some treasure chests and stuff like that. You know, cannonballs, coconuts, but you're not going to do much fighting or anything. So when you're coming in and you're looking at your ships, if you're new to this game, you're going to find yourself at the shipwright. And then, of course, the first ship that they bring you is the better. Is what they call it. It's a small, maneuverable ship that rams targets and causes flooding damage. Now, you're going to see a larger version of this ship later in the game. It is called a brigantine, which is a swift ship that is able to ram singular targets and cause flooding damage. Okay. So this is what you would call a support class ship, basically. It has some DPS value on dealing damage, but it's only it's only for those ram hooks. You come in, you smack it with the hook, you come in, you smack it with the hook, you smack it with the hook. Your cannons are kind of not really picking up any extra stuff off of your off of this ship. So what you would want to put on your cannons is gonna be based on you're gonna be up close, your your biggest your biggest stuff is on the hook. Well the same thing with this this ship here while you don't have the hook on the front it is a ramming ship and it's fast and you you don't want to get caught like broadsiding people you know you just get in aggressively hit aggressively hit that's the type of ship that it is it's for you know dealing uh, basic DPS stuff up close you know those those types of characters then you have something called a defender which is a Hulk this is your first tank style ship then you'll eventually get something called a snow uh, for those of you who like RPGs where you're tanking you're building tank characters you're going to want to give this ship a try this was actually a really nice ship I used it quite a bit then they had the Sentinel which is a cutter it was uh, capable of supporting other ships in thick combat this was basically a support ship where it would give assists to help turn the tide of battle and things like that uh, then you have this firebrand barge. You have another version of this called a uh, Padawan later. Then you have a sandbuck as well. And let me tell you, that thing is a beast. But so this is for your DPS class, your mage type of a build. If if you're familiar with those types of games, guys, this is where you're going to be dealing with fire, specifically fire. Now I'm hoping to see more DPS ships come out that deal with uh, flooding as something other than just a ram hook. We'll have to see. Uh, we did see some weapons come out last season in Season 1 to Coronauts. If you missed that, folks, I don't think it's going to be available, at least not for a while. But you have this. Sorry, I, I'm drinking coffee while I do this. This is I want I want a really good instructional video for the, the new folks coming in. If I've lost you, man, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to bring this to a level that you can understand without trying to make people sound like I'm trying to be berating you know, I, I was accused of that one time, and it's not that I'm trying to berate anybody. I just I want I want everybody to enjoy this type of game, man. But uh, yeah, so this is this is going to be doing a lot of uh, fire damage, and then you have this secondary thing called wildfire when you cause a blaze effect. So you want to use a weapon that has a blaze effect to that. So uh, for this ship, I plan on building one because we do small PVP, but I use this ship quite a bit I had some uh, fire bombards on it at one time and the fire long gun on the front and it was just amazing to see that but I think now that we can actually upgrade these I, I do believe I'm gonna build me one of these small uh, barges just to play around with and bring that thing to level six because it's gonna be fun and some PvP stuff a whole big fleet of these the the amount of damage it does 
is greater than what the Sandbuck does, and the Sandbuck is a beast of a ship. Then, of course, you have the Blaster, which is a sloop. It has, uh, with the right weapon equipped, the ship's able to stand toe to toe with multiple enemies. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't real happy with it. It says uh, explosive hits have 50% chance of triggering explosive, so you would use an explosive weapon with this, by the way. Uh, but I was, I wasn't happy with the speed, man. Every sloop I've ever seen in any pirate movie was just like just extremely fast and really deals out some damage maybe not a whole lot right off but it was a quick maneuverable ship and this ship let me down man i just i i was wanting it so bad to be something cool and and it kind of wasn't so maybe it's something that that as you upgrade that into a level six that could potentially maybe be a good boat but i'm telling you man you're gonna love the barge uh, even at a low level, man, uh, I used that thing for a long time until I finally got over to the Padawan and all that. But you're going to follow your Scarlock missions, and you're going to be doing any of the little tiny missions around the islands you find. Uh, get used to traveling to them. Fast travel is expensive in this game when it comes to silver, and silver is your most precious commodity in this game for dealing with high-end stuff. Now. Uh, you may have to spend a ton of silver to get something, mind you, if you're buying outside of, like, groups and stuff. So there's a lot of Discord groups that have started up around uh, Skull and Bones. A lot of really great guys out there. Uh, there's, you know, we have our, our Banished Souls. Uh, there's a guy, Blackheart Gaming, I think his name is. But uh, I, he's got him a YouTube channel, and he's got some guys. And every now and then we end up meeting them in servers and everybody just farming together, which has been really cool. Uh, it's never planned. We just end up in the same servers. It's pretty neat. I, I've always enjoyed it. But uh, then there's uh, see, man, there's just so many guys. Uh, Addicted to gaming. That is a new channel that's starting up. That is our uh, own YYC Deadpool. He is our harbinger. He is the the man that is in charge. If if he speaks, it's as if you know the Discord owner is speaking. You know, uh, he is him. I'm just going to call some dudes out. Uh, we got YYC Deadpool. We have Septire. If I butchered the name, bro, I am so sorry. And then, of course, we have Why So Serious. Uh, those are our Harbingers and then uh, Beefy Joe Pedro and, and our High Table Agents. We have a structure like the John Wick lore. Really cool stuff. We've got, you know, Agent of the High Tables and, and uh, you know, the Assassin classes and stuff, which should really expand into some of the newer games that we're all looking and wanting to play. So, we're going to be playing a lot more games too, but, uh, and then of course, uh, you know, we, we have a surge over in our agent of the high table position, which is basically a Commodore slot. Uh, he does a great job of getting new guys in, uh, trying to make sure everybody understands how the discord works and then getting them brought into our voice chats where everyone just starts gaming together. It's pretty cool. So, and we have our captains, they, they handle all the moderation and, you know, the things that can be taken care of, these guys get it done. And the things that you would think that, okay, well, maybe they might need some help, they get that done too. We have an amazing leadership team there. Uh, but I did want to give those those uh, agents of our high table and our harbingers, I wanted to give them a shout out. Because they've done a great job building this community, man. And the community is you, the viewer. Uh, everyone that's in, in our community has came over from someone who's either invited them directly or has actually watched our channels and seen our big farm raids so that's been really cool uh, i know i don't talk a whole lot about our discord group but man i i, I really wanted to give those guys some props because they have built exactly something special you see too many times you go into in groups and no one's talking no one's doing anything that's not the case i mean we've got we've got teams that have hit up our pvp events in-game you know farming missions to get cosmetics i mean just that's our continental Man, those dudes have just been really kicking it. That's been really nice. Uh, season 2, we're kind of taking a break, so everybody has a chance to farm everything out. Then we're going to make sure we can catch everybody up. But you need to be farming. Don't just rely on other people, man. Farm it up. Jump in when you need help. There's some of those missions you're going to need help on. But So that was the basic introduction of the ship types that's there. And now what you're going to see is basically a retelling of the same thing. So we have a bombarder class with the Padawan Con. Okay, so this is going to be doing DPS. It has uh, a blaze effect. It has explosive damage as well. 
it's going to increase damage radiuses and stuff. Uh, I love the fire bombard threes on this thing, man. I mean, it, it's just such a hard weapon to beat. It really is uh, very, very fantastic. So when you get to that, try to get those fire bombard threes uh, saved up. By that time, you should be a kingpin, and you can uh, earn. We have things in there how to build those, how to get the materials for it, the blueprints and stuff. Make sure you check our videos. We've covered a lot of that. Rather than cover all of the same stuff over and over, I just want to make a quick view. A little video here just explaining to the channel what you're going to find here. Uh, I'm not a, what do they call those, uh, like gaming personalities or, I'm not sure what the correct term is, man. I'm not savvy on all this type of stuff. Uh, this, is, this is all kind of new to me doing gaming channels, but I remember back, in my day man that's how old I am I get to say that now I remember back in my day when you had gaming communities and gaming magazines and you found the helpful tips and the training stuff that you needed and you know some little hit you know tips and hints that's going to help you along the game and I just don't see that much anymore uh, it's hard to find those types of videos I think so that's kind of what we're gearing here we do some fun videos showing our PVPs and stuff like that and and uh, because, again, the guys that are in those videos, y'all, I mean, they're watching the videos just like you. That's how they joined our team. They come over to ask for an invite. We got them an invite, man. And uh, just amazing guys, everybody. Well, and gals. I mean, it's not all just guys, but we have guys and gals, married couples, all kind of stuff. So, very cool group. Okay, then you start to see this thing called the snow, which is coming up into a tank class. Okay, so here you had the... Uh, Oh, where's she at? The Hulk is what I'm looking for. There it is. Yeah, so the Hulk was a tank class. All right, this was a, a, uh, a DPS ship. This is a DPS ship. So the Hulk becomes the snow. And then you have the Sentinel that becomes the hole breaker of the Brigantine. But it's also... A little backward here so the sentinel is actually I guess the snow yeah so there's a few changes but you're going to see the same stats repeated sorry guys if that confused you you're seeing the eight the same type of ship like this uh, the bettered which is the ramming ship I believe yeah so it's kind of a combination of the hole breaker if you look at it here then you'll have the Hulk, which is basically a tank class, and that's where you get into your next one would be the uh, Snow. And to me, in this game, if you're looking to build, you don't have to compete in all the crazy stuff we post in these things. This is a fun game, guys. Even even if you're just playing around, you just want to build a really nice pirate ship. The best-looking ship in this game, and I think everybody has to agree, is the Snow. When you look at it, you think pirate ship. The rest of these ships with the gear mechanisms and all this weird stuff and all, and the, the two cells, I mean, they're cool, but, but they don't have that, that real nice. I'm hoping to get some Man of Wars is what I'm hoping to see come in this game, man. I really am. But, but Brigantine is a decent ship. Uh, now, if you're getting up here, the Padable Cons will be your first thing. If you are in a situation where you're trying to decide whether you should do a snow or a brigantine, I'm gonna give you some basic stats here. This snow is a tank; they're hard to sink. And we've got some snow builds posted where, if you're just playing against the computer, they're not gonna be able to scratch you. You're gonna brace through everything. You don't even have to brace with some of the builds that's in there if you're just dealing with in-game fleets outside of kingpin rank. Okay. The Brigantine, this ship is the fastest in game. I mean, it, it flies. Uh, if you're using water flask or water barrels, it's what gives you a boost in that game. Uh, you're going to end up seeing where this stuff is going to be running like 21 knots, sometimes 22 if you hit the islands just right. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it hauls. You're looking at 18 without a water, and uh, when the wind's kicking you up, kicking you around and stuff, it still holds pretty decent. But you don't have a lot of hole space. So if you're going out and you're farming materials, which is something you're going to do if you decide to upgrade your ships. When I say farm materials, I'm talking you're, you're, you're not talking 10 or 15. You're talking several stages of 30 to 60 items 
on on some of this stuff, man. It's insane. And then you have to get the pieces of eight built up and all, and and that's that to me is actually fun. I've decided to make the gun a little the game a little more fun the way I play it. We're gonna go over that in the video too, guys. But uh, the pyromaniac sandbuck. I mean, that is probably by far my my favorite ship. Now, one of the things that you see coming up now is this new healing class, which is a support vessel. Now, we've seen a support vessel over here, the Sentinel Cutter originally. So then we had this, this support vessel come out. All right. So now recently we just had this, this brig, which is a type of a support vessel as well come out. So I'm guessing the new, the new ships are going to be a support class, but it'll be modeled after one of you know, the previous. So obviously the Brigantine would be here. Uh, it's undoubtable that the bark is a remake of the snow. It's just a reskin. Uh, some new healing stats to it where it heals itself and everybody around you. Amazing tank. That is by by far one of my favorite ships. Just go out and farm. You got whole space. Fantastic stuff. It is available in the black market which you open up at Kingpin. Uh, I think it's 10,000 pieces of eight. Now you may be thinking why well, that takes forever. Well you've got, you know, almost three months the whole se for the season guys you're going to be able to do it and uh you like i said there's videos you know there's a bunch of videos here make sure you subscribe so you can check out those those uh, folders there's for ship builds and then there's for some of the uh actual stuff you're going to be doing as a kingpin and it's a great game but you don't want to go into it blind not realizing what it is it's like playing elder scroll online but just playing the basic offline part of it okay is what a lot of people are looking at doing this now if you want to get into the elder scroll online that was out where you had massive wars you had dungeon battles and things like that that is where this game is kind of it's it's evolving over that direction it's a life service game they're working the kinks they're starting to see that they have die hard grind hard players in the game so when they come out they start it up and they look at a percentage of how many people are hitting this versus that. And they're waiting for the game to kind of balance itself for everybody to kind of catch up. And I believe that's when the next map expansion is going to happen. So I think this upgrade stuff is going to make people want to join into the Kingpin. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the next ship, and from what I've heard, uh, and it was I think it was Blackbeard. He's one of our captains, and he also helps run our continental staffing over there. He uh, He's over all that stuff, but I think he had posted something up, and it was basically a new type of a sandbuck, high DPS. Didn't have a lot of information on it, but the cells were different. It seemed like they were like almost cut like Doritos. I don't know. Weird. It was kind of weird looking, but they had that, and then there was like a couple of other things in some kind of a uh, book, another uh, another one of Remembers had shared. He's, they got some really cool artwork and stuff. I need to get back in there and, and, and look at those pictures, because that's always cool when people share that. But yeah, so that's your, your, your basic ship class, guys. So, I think we're going to be... I would love to see it this season. I've not heard of any other ships being announced. I do know that the thing said ships on the tag, that would mean more than one. But I'm thinking ship upgrades and, and this new brig is what we're going to get. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with everybody here. The new brig, how do you get it? First off, how do you get that? I'm going to show you here real quick before I give my honest review on that ship. So you're going to come and you're going to go to your pass, smuggler pass. And when you have completed half of this pass, which is 45 points. Oh, if it's not low, well, let me go over to the. Nope, that ain't it. Well, darn. You used to be able to bring up the reward redeem. Anyway, when you get to 45 points, meaning you've spent 45 smuggler points, you're, you're officially halfway through the pass. If you've done 15 and 15 and, you know, whatever over here, it's, uh, it's, it's going to it's going to uh, give you 45 tokens that you spent if you decide to go 30 in one and 15 in the other. My recommendation to you when running the pass, always run Gunmaster first. Unless you just see some piece of armor you really like. 
uh, but run the gun master first because one it's got cool cosmetics but that's where all your guns are going to be at now quartermaster I always hit the wrong button there folks sorry quartermaster on the other hand this over here is going to have your furnitures and things so I get asked a lot in videos hey where did you get that furniture where did you get that furniture well it's coming out of the past uh, or I'm buying it in the black market. If you're not seeing the black market, you see it on this, it either came in the past or it dropped. So like the campaign -y screens, they're not in here. Uh, there's no campaign -y screen in this at all. You have to actually farm that out on the ocean, doing contracts and stuff like that, them uh, bounties and all. Then, of course, your shipmaster, this is where you're going to be getting the new ship. <coughs> and typically, armors for it. So I think last season... You know, I don't remember if last season if you got the if you got the bark at 45 or if it was halfway through this. I don't remember all the way through Shipmaster, but it does have armor in it. Usually, like Rhapsody of the Deep, we had this time, and then uh, Abysmal One. Uh, I've got them. I've not I've not had a chance to really test them yet because I want to get my ships up to a six and do some honest reviews of some stuff. Now, I do have my brig up to a five which is not a six but you get your brig in there guys very easy to run those passes just go blow ships up have fun with the game blow some stuff up you're going to be doing great you know that's that's how you do it so um this brig here bringing that up it is a support class ship this does not have any of the ram DPS damage or anything like that on the hook at all. There's no hook. So you're not ramming anything. The only thing it really helps is it helps your friends around you if you have it set up with the right weapons. It's going to reduce the reload time of their auxiliary weapons by 10%. Alright, which is not much. I mean, it really isn't. The reload time is 20 seconds, so they're getting what, like an 18 second reload instead of a 20 what's two seconds so i i would say if you're going to use this ship put the warhammer on it man i mean honestly just put it on there don't worry about all that little you know garbage with the the buoys they suck i'm just being honest uh the, the healing ones if you're out and you're trolling around and you want to be able to heal yourself use the healing buoy throw it directly in front of you you can heal yourself it's going to cut down on repair kits and help you in the heat of battle that's always fun to have on there as well but you could use that with any ship it doesn't have to be this one uh, so far I'm not liking the whole health the uh, wind is murder on it just like with a brigantine when it when it shifts around it I mean it, it stops you man uh, it, it's just it seems squishy to me man the whole seems just squishy to me I guess the best way I can put it I've not been impressed with it. Uh, I, I'm loving the new torpedoes that we got. Uh, Requiems, I think they're called. Bring that up here. What ship do I have that on? I think I've got. So I've got Battle Bark. It's a four of six. That our Sandbuck five of six or our uh, Brig. It is a five or six, but I, I love this. I love using this ship here over the brig any day. I just do. It's got more whole health. You're not feeling like you're about to die the whole time you're playing. All right. Uh, if you smash them with this thing, it does some good damage because you're bracing your tank. You don't really get a lot of good ram damage out of this new ship at all. It's not going to bolster any of your weapons other than that mine, and the Warhammer does more damage than that mine does. So, up to you how, if you want to use that. I mean, I, the way I look at it is if I'm having to run the build that I want to run, I may as well use the ship that I want to run, which I'm going to be honest is the, the battle bark design that I've put out there. So, if you're looking for those types of videos, guys, look in the Skull and Bone ship builds. That's where all your stuff's going to be listed. It's going to be easier to find it that way. So, uh, But honestly, if I'm just doing my defense, and I love the new defense, guys. It is awesome. So if you don't know what defense is, but I used I used my uh, my sandbuck, man. This is a level six sandbuck, and it is it is just a beast. And and that's what I use for all of my uh, 
the fences. So if you played season one and you're trying to determine whether or not you want to come back for season two, they've added this new feature called defense. And what that is, is when you have taken, let's go to our home map. When you've been taking your territories here like we were before, you, just, you pick them up only. Now, if you look, I actually have running ships going and running, picking the mates up. I don't have to do it anymore. I just have to come in here and fund it, and I'm good to go. Now, one of the other cool things that they have is it got boring where it seemed like all we were doing was picking up eight. So what they've done now is they've added a defend feature, which is you will see a emblem pop up. It'll look like a little castle in a green circle, and you will have to come and defend that base from the computer hitting it. If you don't defend it, if you have a level 10, you're going to lose that base for 14 hours. You won't build anything. Whatever eights is in there, you lose half. So always choose to defend. At least choose to come empty the, the, the freaking bank out before you let the computer have it back for 14 hours. That's, that's my advice to you on that. But that's one of the things that's really cool in the game. And, and you know, I thought it was going to be received a lot better than what it was. I thought everybody was going to be excited about it. And the first time I, I, I did a defense was for a guy in our, in our team, man. And he goes, I've got a defense. I'm like, oh, cool. Let's come help help with it and it was the coolest thing i mean the amount of ships they brought in and we had like five or six dudes over there and it was just it was just all out war and it was so fun and but it would have been impossible for you to do as a as a solo player it really was people were like you know how do i expect a solo player to do this well we don't typically ask that question in our group because if you joined up right now and you just looked at chats, well, there's some people on in there. I don't know who they are. Man, jump in there. We didn't know who anybody was when we first started in that Discord group. And now it's just always new people coming in, joining in, just big groups forming. Then people end up finding folks who they play with their play style and they're, you know, pairing in their teams and stuff like that, too. So we've got a, a pretty good, I mean, we've got a lot of really great dudes, but uh, we've got the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse in there, man. And let me tell you, when they come into a server with PvP, if you see them running and you ain't in the group, you might want to scoot out the server. Because typically when we come to clear a server, these guys come in and they will hit anything and everything that moves that has any kind of a flag on. They'll jump in your events, whatever it takes. Because we want to play in that server. We bring everybody over that we can. And we'll do that several times and it's a lot of fun. And sometimes we let other people come into the server so they can pop a helm wager. At which point, you know, hey man, it's pieces of eight and we're pirates, so that always works out too. So, a lot of fun in that. Some people see that as crap, you know, play, but not me, man. I see that as teamwork, but uh, yeah, so you have those defenses there. And that sandbuck, it will solo. I came real close to soloing before they did the nerf on it, they've made it so easy now. And one of the things that disappointed me was not that it, it was nerfed down so bad, but that they reduce the amount of time so like if you have a completed aisle you should be able to have the same 90 percent chance as somebody with 76 to run a defend while some people are going well i don't want to run that many defends well i don't care about having to build so many ships and you can't build enough ships you can only carry 40 in your inventory folks and there's 76 yeah 76 factories so you're going to be picking 36 of those locations up. Where, which ones are you going to do? I mean, you see what I've got here. I own 25. That's all of the Red Isle. It's uh, two, three, four over here. A couple over here. So, I mean, I don't know. I just don't see the point in it. But I was hoping that they would make a, a, uh, a friend defense type thing where okay if they're going to bring it where it's so easy now let us make it harder give us some rewards for being able to do it some better rewards than what we're getting because uh you bring five friends into one of those things and unleash like they used to have it man you talk about something that is not going to get boring those that's basically what dungeons are on uh, elder scroll and a lot of those types of games you know your, your raids and stuff that for you world of warcraft people and stuff that's what this game is supposed to become and and it seems like a couple of the things were in the right direction and then they brought it way down so here's my theory on that and like i say i don't know
But here's my theory on that. So, if you look at this map, we've only got a half a map. This was in a old, it wasn't even called a beta, it was a technical test. This area here was sealed off. We were up here. All of this was clouded down below and this was open. So you see the northern half of this range. There's two, I think there's two pirate dens in that, that location. One of them is out here off of Africa. And then if I remember right, the other one was up in here somewhere off of, the, off of this uh, East Indies area. I'm not sure. I'd have to get a globe or an atlas, but it was up in this area here. Then, you know, some dotted islands, but they you kind of had an open sea bay with some islands in it and stuff. You know, these are battlefields, folks, by the way. This here, this is considered a, a uh, NPC battlefield. You just come out here and just blow up everything. It's you know, non-objective stuff. A little bit more trying, a little bit more difficult. You can tell by the color of the waters. A little deeper water, so you get a lot of storms and stuff there. It's to get you geared up. When I fought back, all I ever did was fight ships in the waves. That was it. The, the high storms, the winds, and all that stuff. And that's the way I trained with stuff all the time in the game. And it wasn't until I started playing with I ain't going to name her name, but I started playing with a guy, and uh, he's moved on from, from the group, but uh, he does still watch the videos. But, uh, and he always fast traveled, man, and that was a habit I never wanted to get, but that's all I do anymore is fast travel. So now when we come up here and all these events are always in the storms, it's like, crap, man. I should have stayed uh, brushed up on this, gotten a little rusty with it, but I'm getting back to where I was, you know. I got lazy in, in the end of Season 1. I think a lot of people were feeling the grind, we didn't we didn't know what we were grinding toward and some of us a lot of us ground toward the wrong stuff we were trying to grind over to get you know those pieces of eight and we hey I tell you what I was a little upset about it to begin with but but honestly I am so glad that they let us know ahead of time because most of my ships I'm, I'm just waiting on pieces of eight to take my my next level up all right to, to take those ships up to a six I had all the raw materials because I had over three million pieces of eight that I spent in the black market and we put some videos up telling you say hey make sure you, you, you focus on this and and at the time we didn't know anything about sinew string so it, you know it didn't exist in the game so that's one that kind of hung a few of us for a couple of days but I think most of us have got where we need to get with those but um there are things in here such as this has casting sand and wood tar. And I remember how big of a pain it was trying to get casting sand to make my bombard threads. And then the wood tar was, you would think that every ship in the, in the sea would have wood tar, but it don't. Uh, then over here you have the uh, shellac and the crude saltpeter. The crude saltpeter was the big one for building... Man, I won't say, I won't say it was the... Uh, Maybe the Patagon or the snow, and it's not it's not a hard one to farm. All right, it's not. But I did it for the shellac because I was like, okay, I'm gonna get that because it's hard. It's a hard to get commodity. It doesn't drop very often, and and the way I've always seen these RPG games progress, guys, I've always seen it where it'll come up and this type of an item, which is considered a you know, it's just a commodity type of deal it holds some value to building ships well naturally we're going to see like shellac is going to be able to go to a, uh, a higher standard something else crude saltpeter we don't have way of refining it but you have another type of material that's called gannet saltpeter now what the difference is I have no idea is it even supposed to be the same stuff this is a powerful chemical gunpowder used in modern weapons so, I don't know. I don't know if it's the same stuff or not, but I just figured maybe we'd had a way to, to refine it, but we didn't. So, But we refined shellac, so we may end up seeing crude saltpeter become something else in Season 3, is what I'm expecting. Uh, just for those who are still with me and watch, watching this, uh, I think we're going to see that crude saltpeter go up, man. Uh, it's going to have something where it's going to build into something else. If you're wondering, okay, so where do I get some of that stuff? Well, be saving your eights. I'm not... 
I'm not slacking on this season, but I'm doing things differently. Last season for Ubisoft, based off what they told everybody, and it makes sense, was to gauge the type of economy and gameplay the community's looking for. Okay. So the, the cry out from the community toward the end of Season 2 is, this this is boring, it's too easy. So Season 2 starts, and everybody's crying, it's too hard. And the guys in the group where we're at, we're like, hey, if you get a defense, call me. And they're like, what? So if we're going to run it, let us know. Because you're getting 180 points per ship, guys. 180 points per ship. We blew through that pass. We weren't even focusing on doing the pass. We were just getting those ships, man, to get those points. And uh, it, it, we, were, we were out of the pass in three days. I think it took me three and a half. That had a few, well, quite a few guys that finished. I've got guys that are in diamond already all right now. I've been kind of, I won't say lazy. I've done the math as far as what I want to go out of this season with, what I think I'm going to need to be buying in there, and I want to have another, you know, three million if I can. Now, it took me a while to get my warehouses to tens last season. The reason for that was I went and bought Sam Buck a bunch of other stuff. But this this season is it's getting there. I mean we're we're getting closer. So why have I not brought those ships up? Well the reason I haven't is because it's more important for me to get this up to a ten than it is to take a ship I'm not going to use to a six. I'm just being honest. I didn't use the Brigantine much. It was cool to grab pieces eight and stuff. And all I did last season was this. I've got to grab this location here because it's got connections in Red Isle. And there's another one here. Yeah, right here. And this one, Funded Le Bay and Port de Mines. So once I get those two, I've got the other two major hubs coming in. You got Bandari and Hirufu and Jiwi. So once I get these all up to 10, I've been doing some more research on it. So I told you originally bring your red isle relations up. Well, if you're just doing red isles like me in just the main connecting ports right there, so I wanted to know what the names were. I hope you were watching the video, guys. A lot of the questions that y'all ask, uh, I've answered in the videos. So make sure you watch them all the way through because, I, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be rude. It takes a little bit for me to get to answer your questions sometimes because it, I'm taking time out of my gameplay to make a video because we get asked a lot of questions while we're while we're in the game. Uh, guys in our group ask a lot of questions, and let me tell you, it's funny because I'll, I'll I'll just be coming in and someone will be like asking a question. You know, we got other guys like, hey man. Cryptic just made a video on that. Are you not watching the videos? It's like, well, you know, I go in, I give a thumbs up. So you go watch videos of where the meat and potatoes are at, you know. These types of videos I want to make for the people who actually want to learn this game in depth. For the very new player who was hopefully still watching at this point. A lot of great things coming in for you. When you first come in, you want to bring smuggler operations up. I'm going to show you exactly what smuggler operation controls. The smuggler operation is going to control your silver mine. That is right. Now, this is called a distillery. And then there's a laboratory up in Talat Panjara. This is after you open Kingpin rank and you finish off the missions for Rema and you meet the whatever the, uh, whatever this uh, helm chick's name is. I forget her name down here. But you need a Nora, I think. Yeah, you need a so. This is where you're going to come in and you're picking up raw materials like tobacco, leaves, and poppy and stuff like that. And you're going to be making these products called white skull products, gold skull products. Apparently my warehouse is full again. I'm going to have to deal with that. But uh, that is used as a type of currency to buy some weapons. Honestly, my advice save your money don't go buy weapons with it there's nothing the scurlock long nines they're trash anyone i mean if if you get someone they chase you across the bay and they shoot boom 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 and you're running your planet their way yeah, man they're going they're, they're pretty good weapons 
uh, when I fight, not PvP fight, I dog fight. I don't get out in the open water doing crazy stuff. I won't take you into a narrow aisle way, and I'm going to sandbuck you until you hit the bottom of the bay. That's how I play. You know, you pick your surroundings and you pick your battlegrounds just like you would in any RPG game. If you got some uh, a character that's best, like a vampire type character, and they're best at night, but as a blood, a full-on blood fiend, then obviously you don't you don't go get drink blood, and you only attack out at night. Well, it's the same thing. Only attack in areas where your ship is the strongest. If you're out there in the sandbuck and you're trying to take on a brig or a brigantine in open water. It ain't gonna happen. All right, uh, that that freaking brig, he's gonna bust your sails. He's gonna keep nailing you to the floor, and he's going to sink you to the bottom of the sea if he knows what he's doing. That is what our guys do. They they love it when we come flying up in a sandbuck in their in their open terrain. And these are things that you learn from our PVP trainers, guys. We have people that's gonna train you in PVP as well. Uh, I think that this has been one of the funnest games to see starting off. To, it's, it's started to go the right direction, guys. All the harder stuff that we're loving, those are test phases, guys. They're testing to see what kind of a percentage is ready for. This is not a PvE NPC area, okay? This is a guild system, full-on pvp zone that's coming at some point that's what this is up here all right that is it's that this is paradise compared to what this is going to be if you see a ship of any kind that's not a player ship it's going to be an outrageous level and it's going to take quite a few of you to take it down because it's guilds it's built for people who are playing as teams if you were opening up your ships this season you're going to realize pretty quick that let's bring up our map here you're going to realize something real quick. So, all of this stuff with these little forts and stuff like that, these are introductory. All right. When you get up into here and you have a guild system, you're going to have a kingdom. And you're battling for kingdoms. Now, are they going to have dedicated servers for that? I don't, I don't see that happening. I think it's just as people come in, they'll have their ports that they can go to. As a port, you know, a no-shoot zone type deal, but there will be forts that you own that they won't, or they own that we won't, and you're going to go take those forts from them. That's what it is. You're not dealing with little players down here, but you're going to have that come up here, and it's going to be actual people fighting, and you may end up seeing those big massive battles with NPC ships and stuff too, but uh, I would fully expect it to be at least what we first started off with. It's going to be cool when it happens, and it is going to happen because when you come in and you're building your ships, guys, to do your uh, deliveries over to Shipwright, I forget the exact number. I think it's, oh, let's see here. Let's see how many we've got built. So if I've got a ship on everything, I've got 25 of 31 ships assigned. So somewhere around, I think it was around 15 or 20 ships, it kicked up a thing saying you can now put on your guild tag. So you're easily identif identified in, in, you know, to your team, who you are. All right. Well, there's nowhere to do that in the game right now. So that was something in the coding that's, you know, I, I like to call it an Easter egg that come out. That's just me, but... It's something that's going to be for the guild system that's opening up. And the fact that we're seeing some coding slip, whether purposefully or not, I don't know. But I, I'm thinking we're going to at least get part of this come season three is what I'm looking. Uh, there's, there's a, there is a dedicated game base. Now, if you think about any game that's ever been popular that has since, you know, there's just not a lot of people playing it. But they still have an 8 to 10% fan base on that game. Those are people who, you know, it wasn't enough for this. They wanted more out of the game. That's what this is. That's what's going to be coming for us. That's what we're coming toward. It's something that we want. All right. This zone down here, yeah, this will be like whatever we end up building and earning up here when we do decide to come down in the area. I'm almost expecting that 
they're going to require us to uh, lower down the level of ships. The reason I'm saying that is they keep talking about large ships like these areas which take up, I mean really, I mean it takes up a decent chunk of the map. Some of these tributaries coming around. I mean not a real big chunk but a decent chunk. You don't have that up here. You have a sliver land up here and then like a little bit quick down here. But this is like basically open waters from what I can remember. Huge open waters. Something like this come around more. Come around. I don't even remember how it went. But but that but this was back. I mean we're talking. It, it, it was before everybody got fired and they brought a bunch more people in. Whenever that was, that's how many years ago it's been, and the game got a whole re reboot. Well, the game didn't get a reboot. The, the game got a gutting to be released in stages, because the people that are coming into the game and are watching some of our videos and the commenting said, "Oh my gosh, this game is a lot more involved than I realized." Could you imagine if we'd have come in and just right off the bat we were hit with all of this stuff? that's coming in and we're like hey whoa wait what the heck you know trying to, we would have gotten organized but it would have been a little too much to take in because there was a lot of concepts that even now when it comes to ship builds there's there's a lot of builds that are awesome one of the builds that I won't call it a controversial build it's a great build is a sandbox so there, we have a lot of our guys man they'll come in here and they will come on this sandbox and they will put fire up and bars all the way around that thing they can hit up close and they can hit out medium range you know and just do some massive massive damage okay but when I watch them it's taking three or four shots sometimes to take out ships once I've sunk the first ship this demi cannon it will sink other than a ball ship any ship in the fleet since I out sailing around it'll sink the very next ship with one shot and cause a blaze effect that typically take out two or three that's next to it uh, and that that's just pop off the rockets is this usually sinks the smallest ship in the area and then you're you're charged for 30 seconds and every shot you do with these demis at close range because of the furniture that we have on this let's go over my furniture here uh, this is the build I truly do run uh, I always change out a piece of furniture usually but I'm gonna show my build so I use a sticky fuel station to increase the duration of a blaze effect on enemy ships by 10%, so that's great. And then you have the scrapper station which stores 8,000 hull damage after a crew attack. The problem with this build is you don't have a chance to do a crew attack because the ship's already sunk. You're not charging your crew attack meter fast enough. All right. This ship also reloads a lot faster because it is a level 6 ship. Then we have the Fantana station. Increases secondary damage of rockets by 12%. Increases the damage to structures by 12%. So, this ship here, I can come out and I can take on a four if I want to. Alright? Because I also have a Fire Bombard 3 on the back, which I can swap out with a Mons Meg 3 if I need to, to go do forts. Great ship. But you got to keep it moving or you'll get smoked in a fort battle. Then the demi cannon furnace is going to increase the maximum range of the demi cannons by 10% to add some extra range. Keep it up close. Keep it in their face. Keep those cannons firing right on them, man. Right on the weak points. That's what you want. If you raise up, aim straight down on the deck right near the mast and just boom, just shoot right down into the deck if you have to. But you're going to sink them very quickly. And then the maintenance forge. So this is a restores 1% severe damage per second while out of combat. You may be thinking, well, why in the world would he put that on there? Well, I'm not running Ouroboros anymore. I'm running a new armor that's going to give me another 25%. All right, which is pretty cool. But uh, it, this is going to restore 1% of severe damage per second while out of combat. If you get sunk, it's going to fix your hole so you don't have to go back to the uh, port. Then, of course, the volatile fuel, which is going to increase the charge rate of a blaze effect on enemy ships by 10%. That That's phenomenal because, like I say, when you're running those those uh, these shields and stuff. Let's bring it up here. And it's got a, it's got a, it says, promise is etched into the hole prove sturdier than any piercing shot. So you got you've got really good piercing ability. They're not going to come up and ping you with a long gun. That's what that's saying. 
Okay, so it's got destroying a target confers a blood and gold status on your ship, which increases the weapons damage and armor on your ship by 25% for 30 seconds. That's every time you shoot a ship that 30 seconds resets. The 25% does not stack, okay? That doesn't stack on her. But there is a piece of armor on here. Or I'm sorry, a piece of furniture here. See if I can find it. I believe it's called a war horn. I may. I might need to go build one. Let me look. Oh, I bet I've got that on my. Uh, There it is. What's that on? Oh, it's on my brig. Okay. Uh, this one here, consecutive hits decrease reload time by 0.5 up to a maximum of 15%. The effect resets after after 10 seconds. It means after 10 seconds of no firing, it's going to reset. But you're going to be spitting your maximum reload 15% there and because you're, you get this ship up to level six bring up her stats okay so this is level six stats on a sandbuck guys a ship specialized dishing out fire damage and burning of its targets is able to target multiple enemies in close proximity meaning it does this a blaze effect which is just amazing uh, DPS specialized in dealing damage and status effects okay so this ship is going to be boosting up your status effects and, and DPS as well aggressive playstyle like I say this is not aggressive you far off this is aggressive you're going to overtake them and up next to an island if you got to pin them against the freaking side of the island man and just wear them out with your cannons this is the ship you want this deals 5,000 burning damage when you apply the blaze effect to an enemy ship so the blaze will be applied to enemies in a radius of 150 meters. It sends out a ring of fire that they don't show the UI on anymore, unfortunately. But it would send out this big ring of fire that would go across the ocean. Just huge explosion. And it would just toast the ships around. Now, if they didn't have enough damage to withstand that, then it would basically just blow them up. But they'd be burning the ones that were stuck or left. They'd be burning, man. And they'd burn right to the, right to the bay real quick. Says this uh, has a fire bug perk. This opened up at level six. It decreases the fire weapons reload by 25%. If you remember that war horn we were looking at, it does by 15%. So you're looking at a 40% reload time that's going to be decreased there. So the reason I'm fixing to change this furniture out right here, let's go build one. I don't want to strip that off that other ship. So you're going to learn crafting here. If you're still watching this and you're new. So you open up blueprints. You buy them around different islands and stuff. If there's a blueprint you want to know where it's at, you go to your codex. If you don't know what a codex is, when you bring up your map, you tab over. You have codex right here. I did not click on that. And you're going to be able to look at your ships, your captain tools. All the deck weapons in the game, the top deck weapons in the game, uh, bow weapons, auxiliary weapons, armors, furnitures, which is where we're headed now. And it's going to show you every piece of furniture. Now, you can go and you can track the blueprint if you want to and all that stuff. I personally, I don't really care about doing it. This actually here increases repair amount of repair weapons. Yeah, so that's for repair ships. But that's going to be true of any material that you need to get in the game. You can be able to look at that codex and find that. Okay, so you come over to a carpenter. Then we want to craft a new item. And I think... There it is. Oh, that's the spiked war horn. Oh, me. There it 
There it is. Megaphone. So as consecutive hits decrease road load time by 0.5% up to a maximum of 15%. This effect resets after 10 seconds. So every hit is going to uh, start decreasing your reload time. So we're going to go ahead and build this. And then we're going to go ahead and equip it to our sandbuck because the trick with this ship is if you get in there and you don't deal out massive damage immediately and it closes they will swarm you in this thing if you if you take it out and trying to farm with it you know especially if you're doing the course fleets if for some reason it calls in massive fleets just wanting to hammer you man and uh it usually holds up if you have the right kind of damage going out Meaning you're destroying the ships as quickly as possible. And that's the trick with this ship. You've got to get them close. And you got to hit them hard. Let's see. We're going to take the scrapper station off. And then put this megaphone on. Like, like I said, I'm taking the scrapper off because I'm not able to build up the, uh, the actual crew attacks. I mean, it's destroying ships too quick, so... That's a good problem to have. So what can we do to play on that? I mean, and make it even better? Reducing the reload time? I mean, heck yeah, man. But yeah, so a lot of really great armors. Uh, so this Rhapsody of the Deep. Let's see what this is here. I think this is a flooding armor. Yeah, so this is, this is a armor I think that you would put on your snow. Or, or even your, your bark. Uh, but you know what your tank ship so this is a tank armor so you're starting to see specialized armors coming out now which they had this black prince armor which was pretty similar not exactly but pretty close and where's that other one must have it assigned down here somewhere yeah, so Stormwoven Symphony, I like this one. It's got a crescendo, which is where you charge up, and when you release, it sends out a pulse of 125 meters, a big shock wave. It does 6,000 damage to the surrounding hostiles. Just phenomenal. Uh, that's what I use on my, my battle bark. But this Buccaneer's Oath, like I say, I've been using this mostly on uh, my Sandbuck and... I put it on the, the brig thinking it would help make it a little tougher, deal out some more damage, but I'm starting to think the Leviathan armor is probably going to be the one I want to put on that. So that's our special monster armor right now. Is Leviathan. And what I am trying to get is the freaking skin, man. I've been hitting it with people. I've been hitting it solo. I, I just, it doesn't want to to it here. This is what give me the last two skin. It's kind of crazy. Yes, yeah, so the Leviathan armor. So I need two more skin and then we can build that. But it's got a 1150 armor on there. It is 23% uh, against flooding, 18 against fire, 35 piercing. Then every knot of sailing speed increases the armor by 1%. So that's for those fast moving ships. Your brig, your brigantine, stuff like that. That's what this armor is for, those fast movers. So it's, it's good to see you, you're getting that in here. It's got impenetrable on air, reduces the weak point damage by 20%. So, I mean, as soon as I get that skin and get it on that brig, man, we can, we can see if it really toughens it up. you got to use the right type of stuff. Like in the Buccaneer armor, that's dealt for, I believe, specifically a Sam Buck. I mean, that's just the way I look at it, man. Or even a um, Patagawan. Or if you want to get down into uh, ships such as the uh, Barge, you know. Uh, these, these are these are some, some really good ships that you could use it on. I like the Barge. I, I used it all the way up to uh, my Patty. And before it, I used the Hulk. You had the extra cargo space for farming, man. When I would leave the harbor, I didn't come back till my cargo was full. I mean, that, and, and that's the way you need to play the game and make sure you got time for that. Uh, but if you're using a brigantine, you're going to be finding that you're having to go constantly or the battered, bedard or whatever the heck they call it. If you use that ship, you're going to be coming back to dock every 15 seconds because it, you know, 
it doesn't take long to fill it up but yeah so that's that's kind of the the idea of the ships and the armor and things that they got and kind of where i'm seeing that they're going i think we're fixing to get a a new uh idps ship be like the Patagon, and then turned into the sandbuck i don't know when that's going to happen but if you're coming into your your uh pirate's den you just now hit kingpin you're coming in here to give you a little bit of information but not a whole whole lot of what's going on we'll explain some things that you see on this map here okay so when you see the map you're not going to see all this highlighted blue you'll see the factories you own and what level they are so what you want to do as soon as you hit kingpin is there are going to be events let's bring up the other map there's going to be events you're going to see things such as, uh, let's see if that's, no, it's not a legendary. You'll see these blue dots that'll pop up. They're a darker blue than what you're seeing here. It'll be called a legendary heist. And a legendary heist is going to give you a location after you complete the heist and then return to the aisle with the contract or with the lease. You'll get a lease for an island. That's how you do that. So pretty cool on that. You can run them by yourself. Then you can run them with friends. It's up to you. Uh, if you are new to the game try not to be stuck in one if two other guys join but don't show up to the fight that happens sometimes because we just assume you know people just assume that hey you know you can handle it because that's the way we play them all the time anyway you know and uh so you got to be careful with that if, if it's getting tough and you're in a group there's not other people there just jump out of the group real quick and, and you can uh, hammer that in there so uh, I would re I usually recommend being outside a group when you're trying to run some of those things, but uh, you know that that's up to you how you want to do that. Now, when you get these locations, you're going to want to upgrade them so your helm map looks like this. You're going to come over and click manage, and you will be able to fund them here. It's going to have different amounts for the different types of products and stuff it can make. You're going to have a thing once you hit level 4 where you can assign a ship. Something to know on that, if you have a level 4 bank and your bank only carries 400 or 500 pieces of 8, if you assign a ship like this one here that would carry 610, your bank's never going to be full enough to queue that ship to come pick it up. You have to use a ship that's comparable in size picking those eights up and if the bank isn't going to get full enough you have to decide do I want to put a small ship on there or do I just want to bring it up to a level six or a level five because at five you're going to have 1,000 capacity so that's a good number there I've just been slowly bringing these things up I wanted to get my tens over here we started off with these here and I think I'm going to move down into these connections here but then again, I might come here because a lot of these are, are connected up into the northern sections now. So coming over to their, their sister bases over here. So I, I might bring these. I got this 10 here up. I got a, was that a 6? Yes, yeah, so we got 6s the there. But 9s uh, coming in. So we haven't quite got, got them all up to 10s. This one here is a 5. So I can go ahead and bring that one up some. Like I say, I'm putting off. I, I upgraded the ship that I use, which is the Sandbuck. Uh, the other ones are coming up nicely. And if I end up... Oh, no. What am I doing? I'm trying to upgrade. Make sure you're doing the right stuff. Make sure we didn't take our ship off. Okay, now it's still there. I guess I better pay attention to what I'm doing there. Okay, so now we're going to upgrade so you got to make sure you tab over to upgrade factory or you end up unassigning ships guys so we got it to a seven it's not quite a, a nine or a ten but it's getting there when you're getting up to these ten levels I you know honestly other than the fact you only have to fund it every like two days you're really not getting much more I mean you're getting 68 an hour instead of 63 but your capacity is 4,500, but it'll never reach that. If you have a ship picking up at 600, you know, or 610, it's never going. To, you're never going to have to worry about it getting full. So what you have to decide is, do you want to be dealing with a lot of takeovers? 
because once you get five factories, I'm sorry, it's nine now. Once you get nine factories, they just changed it uh, with the uh, hot, hot patch. So once you get nine factories, you are now eligible to have to run defenses. And they've reduced the, the proc rate on that like crazy. I've been playing all day and I've only had two, which has been crazy. But So you're going to have this stuff in here where you got to take and get all this upgraded. You're going to have to do your decide how often do you want to be doing those things. How much of the content do you want to grind out? Well, most of my fun last season was farming uh, Roadman Godin up here, the Zamaharabu down here, the, the Talar Source King or whatever. And then uh, coming up here and hitting that, that old green uh, Kamaharabu, I think it was called, or something. It's another Talorosaurus. It's just not the king. So now this season we have a Megalodon down here. Now my understanding is next week, unless something changes, but it sounds like next week is going to be the king Megalodon. So if you've ever fought the green monster and you fought Zamaharabu, the red and white version, you've seen how much bigger he was. Well, this Megalodon's pretty close to his size. Maybe it's bigger. So I, I just, I'm just wondering where they're going to put this Megalodon at, man. I mean, this thing's going to be huge. This is going to have to be something like up in here, I bet. I bet it's going to have to be up in the top. I mean, I just don't see. I guess it, if you had enough area in here where Zamaharabu was. But look at the, the colors of the water here. It's pretty dark there. So it would have to be somewhere in this patch because most of this, there wouldn't be a big enough area there. It's too shallow over here. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But that thing's going to be massive. I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the content. My plan was is before the the real big Megalodon, I was, it was cool to see that we had the small one. Uh, I was kind of hoping we would, and it, there it was. So that was pretty cool. So, But the big one's still coming. And I want to get this stuff up to 10s before it does. That way, when all this comes out, I can divert my focus to the grind. Getting those cosmetics. You know, we're doing the Hubok things. I don't know if they're even still on the uh, bounty board. I heard a rumor that they didn't see them, but we'll go double check. I couldn't see why they would take the them missions off. So you start getting new bounty board missions once you hit Kingpin, guys. And that's going to be depending upon the season that's going on so this was totally different when it was last season than what it is now no they still up there surely yeah we still got it up there you got the symphony mortel no that wasn't that's not them though i guess they took it down wow so we had the hubok twins up there you can see them there they're completed but uh that's the, those are the two protagonists that we're going to be play, fighting against, or antagonists, I guess, depending on which. If you're if you're a pirate, they're your antagonist. If you're on their side, you're the protagonist because you're the good guy. But the story behind them, my understanding is, I guess a pirate had attacked the ships that their wives was on, and they was lost at sea, and uh, that's why they hunt pirates. Is what it sounded like to me. I'll be honest with you, I didn't really listen to it too much I was like skipping between it because I just wanted to get to the content but it sounds like a pretty cool storyline with it I know that was the complaint a lot of people had with La Peste uh, you know I didn't really too care too much on stories or whatever the way I looked at the game the way I understood the game was the way I understand every RPG game that I've ever played and probably will ever play Every single mission that you run is going to send you to talk to someone to get you used to the stuff you're going to be doing. So the first time you got to come up and it says talk to Skurlock. So you come off of that dock and of course Skurlock's up those stairs up ahead there. And then he goes, okay, well you're going to have to go talk to the guy about getting the ship. So you come talk to the guy over here. And then he goes, oh, well you got to go talk to somebody over here. So then it gets you used to coming to the carpenter. Which is where you build your weapon or your uh, not your weapons, your furnitures, but you also upgrade your tools, the tools of the trade that you need. So it's introducing you to the aspects of the game. Now, where people are like, well, it seemed like it just dropped off and we never didn't have any more missions with those guys. That was introducing you to the carpenter here. It's introducing you to the ship right here. 
it's introducing you to you know the blacksmith here and they have you do some missions and while you're running those missions understand you can run these missions more than once so when when I came in I ran these because you got 50 XP or infamy as they call it you'd get 50 for each one and they were pretty easy missions to run so I'd pop those a few times got ranked up enough where I could get the bigger weapons now your weapons are locked into your actual level so if you're not a kingpin and you come into the game and you go hey man I want some Zam 3's oh I would build them for you except that you can't actually use them the reason you can't use them is because it's locked to level so to use these new weapons and uh, getting your bark and getting that brig you, you have to be in what they call the end game meaning you've passed the basic training portion of the game which was the southern hemisphere here now what they're doing is they're teaching us what our personal stuff is going to be doing so everyone has a personal character and when they get guilds going on you have your leadership you have your, your members and stuff like that over there but each of those guys got personal stuff they got to do to keep your character up that's what this area here is for this is going to be for keeping your character's stats up earning whatever those marks are to get you those in-game weapons all right pieces eight turning into sovereigns type stuff up here you're gonna be able to upgrade forts and stuff and, and, and I'm hoping this is where the weapons crafting is going to open up because typically what happens if you can craft weapons in RPG type games the MMORPGs you can then take those weapons down into other areas where they would have you know, player versus player events all right, well, this is always player versus player. When you come down here, you can join certain events and fight with each other, such as the, uh, oh. Let's see if we can see a hostile takeover here, if there's any. Sorry, guys, I got to keep these things funded while I talk. So, you're going to have these, these, uh, events and stuff that come up. It's called a hostile takeover. It's going to light up red in area that you can take. Looks like the next one's in 10 minutes and 15 seconds. So you would run over and you would have to attack that base. Plunder it, basically. But you don't hold the plunder button. You accept the hostile takeover and you come in. Now where it gets interesting is if you're taking Fort Debout and I decide, you know what, I, I, I need Fort Debout. And you're in there and like, okay, I'm taking this. And then I join into the event. We have to fight it out, but we also have to fight Fort. But the most points that I'm going to get to be able to grab that is by sinking you as many times in the, you know, a lot of time that I can because you're going to pay out higher points than all the small stuff in the area. But what I will do also is all up along this African coast, I like to take these when people are actually sitting on them. It's just, I, I just, I don't know, it's just the way I am. So people come up, we're like fighting over Bandari. So we're out here and we're fighting and stuff. I've come around island just a little bit and he's sitting right here and as I skirt around all those little bitty bedards and the long fireboat stuff started coming up near him well I just come right around and just popped with my sand buck and caused the blaze effect the blaze effect then traveled around all the ships around the area and sank him instantly because every time a blaze hits you're looking at six uh, 5,000 damage effect on her just blasting across man and, and that's a lot of damage ignoring brace and ignoring your armor and, and it'll fry you every time so that's how I like to, that's why I do that because I love using these up close areas where it's tight because I'm not going to pick up a lot of speed in the sandbuck because it's just not a fast ship but if I can get you in here your little fast mover is going to have one heck of a time turning compared to me so it's pretty cool that way that's why a lot of guys will use uh, fire bombards on it shooting off of it and it's a great weapon to use that but like I say it doesn't suit my play style I like to get up right up on them and you know hammer 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 that's just the way that I play the games so they have different types of builds for your ships for that but man this uh, this system is a lot different than what it was last season so last season we got all these areas I had all St. Anne eh, pretty much what I'm getting here I think I ended up I had all of this area here or maybe it was here I don't remember now this is one of these zones I had I had the, the full area but uh, and then of course he's coming up here. But I never funded any of the lower stuff. I just funded Saint Anne and this here mostly. And occasionally I'd come over and fund up a couple that I had over here. Like uh, we took uh, Mega Fort Ouston, 
with our free free lease that we got out of the past you open up several leases at least three inside the pass and if you're running those defenses sometimes you actually get a helm lease as a reward it gives you a raider chest and when you open it up there's a chance for a helm lease or a lot of pieces i ate so there's always something going on within the game but those are going to earn you the currency to get you on this leaderboard here now I'm not a leaderboard junkie I don't chase leaderboards I look to build my ships the way I like to and the way I like to play and the only reason I put ship build videos out is because a lot of times be playing with people and they're like hey man what's on that ship and I was like I'll make a video and post it up so we post the video up well that shares it not just with the people that was asking but anybody who wants to see what we're using and, and and that's why I do that. So it shows you the, the builds that I like to use. If I tell you a build is kind of like, eh, hey, I'm not really sure it might get some changes. Like the brig, I've changed some things on it a couple times already. I'm just, I'm trying to make a poor situation into something that maybe could be a little bit better. But like I say, man, I didn't care much for the brigantine either, personally. Uh, I've I trudged around in that freaking snow for a long time. I didn't care about the speed, man. I liked going where I was going, and I wanted to get there in style with something that would hold some stuff and could stand the battle. Them brigantines, you can come in, smash into them and stuff like that, but you don't want to get caught in the middle of a bunch of ships. It's fine one-on-one, -on -one, but if you get caught against a team, that brigantine ain't going to last. I don't care what you're using. It's not going to last. Now, they had some guys that were lasting in some brigantines there for a while, but it ended up finding out that those people were getting like banned from the game Ubisoft wasn't having that stuff for where they were having some PC players coming in and apparently they were running some scripts and they have some kind of they call it the eye in the sky is what I always hear it but uh, they have things where if, if a battle gets reported immediately that that is that whole battle that took place as soon as that report goes out it would go to a system and it would get scanned for any inconsistencies in the programming and if it had some, then it would immediately remove them. I don't mean like just, you know, remove them from your server. It, re it removed them from Ubisoft's skull and bones. They wasn't in it. They had to appeal it and all that kind of stuff. And typically, from what I've heard, once once that happens, you're done. Okay. So uh, they, there's a lot of people that got upset. Apparently, there was something where people were able to get a bunch of pieces of eight. You know, they didn't get anything for it, man. Hey, they didn't get anything for it, dude. Uh, they weren't able to carry it over in season two, so maybe it's time to hang off, hang off of that. Now, there were people like, well, there were people who had a lot more eights than me, but there were people like me who kind of we we was in it for the fun of it. We had what we needed in our in our warehouses. We had what we needed as far as stuff, and we thought we might slip into the season with a little extra. And then what we end up seeing is, oh, you can only bring 300,000. Now, I don't know if that's going to be true going into Season 3 or if they're going to do a complete reset. Man, I don't, I don't have any clue at all. They may have a completely different setup for some of this stuff at that time because the, the new uh, Hell Management system, that is that is something that's going to be evolving. It's, it's going to be changing as it goes, you know, as this game goes forward, so... It'll always get get new things added and maybe some different switches to it. So we're going to be relearning this, I think, about every season, at least for until all the content finally releases out. But uh, you're going to pick up all your eights and stuff. And here's the leaderboard. <coughs> we are currently at gold. We have 234,768 collected pieces of eight. We need 300,000 to hit diamond rank. So we're getting close to getting our next 1,200 sovereign reward there. We're going to be popping that here pretty soon. And I am now sitting where I don't have anything extra that I need for my eights. And I don't need anything for sovereigns. So the rest of the season is basically going to be collecting some stuff. Uh, I'm going to let it build my eights up, pieces of eight, because I don't need the ships that are in there for anything, man. Just leave it in there. And uh, once I get those ships taken care of, which they are, I've put uh, put ship on every base. When I took a location, I made sure I had a ship already built for it. Now, I started off, I was just throwing some good armor and some good weapons on small ships. 
to get them where they could go real far off, which was going to be way too expensive. So what I ended up doing is I kept all my good armor, I kept all my good weapons, and I just went through and I went to the, oh, it's not the warehouse, sorry. Here's the warehouse. So I went to my warehouse and I want to see exactly what I had over here. And I had a ton of level one garbage. I mean, just, you know, garbage cannons that drop. I mean, we're still getting crap. You know, this great spring wall is okay. I ended up by putting the double winch ballista on another ship that I sent out to pick up eights. So Basilisk three tearing coverns, Demi Cannon ones, uh, Skurlock chasers, like I say. That is alright. I mean, uh, the Skurlock long nines are a little better, but not much. But I got the blueprint to build those if anybody needs a build. But I'm just not into them. But fire by bars. So these are things that I've been picking up from battles and stuff. Most of the stuff that's left over. Then, of course, some of our newer weapons that I'm not using, like the Infernal Maul, the Little Grace, and the Mind Spring Loader. If I use anything, it'll be Little Grace as a healing to heal myself in big battles. That's mostly what I'm seeing it used for. But that's I, it's going to be hard for press for me to give up the, the uh, Warhammer, though, to put that freaking healer on there. Because that Warhammer, it's pulled me out of some tight situations. So I just don't see it happening. I really just don't, but you're gonna get you're gonna get to get those weapons with sovereigns and stuff. And the way you do that is at the blacksmith. Sorry, not the blacksmith, the black market. And if this seems scattered around, like I say, man, I'm just making a, a friendly video. You get to know me a little bit. Uh, I'm pretty laid back for the most part. I don't like drama and I don't like crazy stuff and, and all that, you know. We got a, a great leadership team where them guys they ha they've got everything handled, man. I mean they, they they're just fantastic. And if I'm not mistaken and I could be most of them have come over after I guess hearing about the group or seeing a video about it, you know, and inviting stuff and come in and Tell you, man, we we've got some great players, casual players, a lot of a lot of guys that are looking to start getting into that farming. And that's when you know you got them. They're coming into voice chat more, like, hey, I want to join in with y'all's raids and farms today. And and next thing you know, they're in PvP training. It's like, yeah, we got you now. We're gonna get y'all primed up and stuff. And it's nice to have people that can handle their own in the game, or can come and back you up because they know how to handle their own, you know. And we always back each other up in there too. But your black market, you're gonna get. A lot of different items, so like Worm's Breath, Orca Mechanisms, Gannet Saltpeter, Eel's Twine. I don't know that those will ever be anything that will turn into something else. You know, kind of how your your shellac and your, your stuff go into other things. But it's possible. But I'm definitely going to be getting these Crude Saltpeters, these shellacs. You know, I haven't looked back through here to see if they put that new uh, sinew string on one of these. They did not. So that is a hard material to get, sinew string. It's not hard to obtain. It's just hard to obtain in any great quantity. That is a item that is required for upgrading your ships, guys. It is, it, and it, let me tell you, it is such a long grind. It's not hard. You're going to come right over here to this area called Anakahana. And you're just going to farm this. There's a, there's two towers right here and then the one up at the corner. What I do is I come in over here at Sacred Tree. Take that tower out. Come in. I take this tower out and I swing right over. Take that tower out. Hit plunder and just sit right here with the back of my sandbuck facing the back of the bay with my fire bombards. And then, of course, my rockets. And as they get close, I just bomb the area, you know, just, just hammer the ships as they come in. It's not hard. It, it goes pretty easy. You can run that with a small ship pretty easy, too. Those are little bitty ships that come up in that area. So not too hard to get that sinew string. Now, you won't have any need for it until you hit kingpin. So if you're not a kingpin yet, probably don't want to jump straight into it, guys. So that's what, that's what I would recommend anyway. But, uh, you know, people can play the game how they like. And that's one of the things. It's like, you know, I show I show builds that I get asked to show, like our sandbuck and stuff. Uh, the brig is an ever-evolving 
thing. I've got something working out. Yeah, so this is a legendary heist. You would join this. And you would go fight it. Or up to three people could join it. You go fight the ship. And then the other two dudes are watching your back. And you're trying to get up to, you know, uh, up here to Loch Penjara. Or you could even try to take it over here to St. Anne or wherever, you know. But it has to go to a major hub. Once you get that, you would get that, that location that's tagged on it. Which was Garande. That one is right here. Yep. So, some pretty good stuff. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, like I say, if you if you're interested in joining our gaming community, man, let us know down in the comments. We'll get you an invite. I, the reason I don't post a link up there anymore, those links do not always last seven days. And even the ones that's supposed to be the you know the permanent link, for some reason, something's going on where. After a couple of days, it's no longer valid. So, just send send me a message. Uh, we'll get you. You know, we have a lot of guys watching the, the chat too. They come in and they help post those invites in too. So, if you, if you see someone and it's not me, understand it's probably one one of our one of our uh, members in the gaming community. We're not a mill sim type, but we also don't just sit around and, and get stomped over either so we have we have our hardcore pvp guys man and when these guilds come out you guarantee we will be hammering that now what that means for those who are not into the pvp aspects okay you're still going to have a lot of this content here but when you need help running something down here and you call for help we come out we're going to have the weapons to do it and then we're going to be able to understand the game and get you into those areas. As you can see, you're seeing these these major routes starting to come up in here a little bit more often. They should just swing off the back of the map a little bit. But I think we're I think we're coming up. Season three would be the soonest I would I could see this happening. But you know I've been wrong in the past. It may happen quicker, but I don't think that's going to happen. I've seen a lot of people talk about are we fixing to get. But I'm not seeing anything released by Ubisoft. I know they said that they're still working on some things because this top zone is not just going to expand this map. This is, if you ever played uh, the Division, you had the Black Zone, or is that what it's called? The Red Zone, the Black Zone? Man, I don't, man, that's been so long ago. It was straight up PvP, and then there would be like some OP NPCs in there. I mean, just overpower out the wazoo. But if you got to where you were competing in here on a on, on that area, Dark Zone, I think it was called Dark Zone. Yeah. When you were in the Dark Zone, if you got where you were dominating there, you could come down and you could just wipe any little thing running around on the map. You know, it wasn't no big deal. So that's kind of the situation we're, we're looking at building is, you know, we've got guys that are just die hard looking for that. And it, I, it's going to come. As to when, we're not sure yet. But So this is the other thing that we had. I'm glad that finally popped up. This is a... Hostile solo takeover. If you don't want to deal with PvP, if you join this right here, no one else is going to attack you. It's you against the base. Now the problem with that is you have to 100% this. All right, and the amount of time it takes to end, you have to get 100% completion. So you're going to have some issues when you come down into Mega Fort. Come down in here to uh, where we at here. Yeah, so you have like Dooster West, Dooster North, Dooster East, Dooster uh, Fort Dooster. I mean, these these are just loaded with towers, all kinds of towers. You know, and then you have your Mega Fort and your Houston Capital and, and all these towers in this area here. So running this solo, it might prove it might prove pretty crazy. You know, just have to try it. I don't think you will have a problem handling it, okay? But what I find to be quicker is to join these types. These are hostile takeover PVPs. When you join an area, it's you up to five people. And I like to find ones that have people in it sometimes, whether I own it or not. If you own a factory, it can still come up for a hostile takeover and you can jump in and you can fight against somebody. And the reason I like to do that is it's just fun to come out there and, and fight against something that's not a machine. You know, well, a machine, like a, a written script algorithm thing. So, you know, see what your builds are doing and stuff like that. So 
really that and putting a PvP flag up is really the only way you have to run PvP right now in the game. Uh, and that has had, I would say it's had limited success. It's, it's had some success, but it didn't really have anything that really like grabbed my attention. And I'm usually all about the PvP. But uh, to me, the flag thing was just kind of, it was all right. Uh, we, we, we run so deep in a server that people leave. When we come in and everybody's running PvP flags, you come into a PvP server, they leave. They, I mean, they want PvP, but they don't want to be competing against teams, you know. Because we will, if, you know, people come under attack and they call for help, we'll come over and it ain't one or two of us coming over. We have a, a we actually have an SOS system. You put in SOS and it pings everybody. and Everybody that's online, they all jump in and start coming into the server. And we, we defend our, t our team like that, you know. It's just how we are, so... But uh, a lot of fun that way too. But I'm looking forward to the the, the the more intricate PvP system, which I think is going to be similar to Dark Zone over there on uh, the Division. Man, that's what I'm expecting. Something similar to that. Obviously, it's ship based, but that's where I'm seeing this game progressing. And I'm not talking Division Two, where it kind of like, eh, but the the original Division where you first started Dark Zone before they started really kind of messing with some of the the settings making it kind of weird so what I'm hoping is when they bring this up they make it exactly the way that they're releasing content now or maybe just a little harder you know as we as we gear up our ships but uh, this this area here man it seems to me like it's being governed by more of a casual gamer type of a style which isn't a bad thing because we got a lot of casual gamers but but what we're doing right now is going to be the casual gameplay in game for people, and uh, you've seen how quick. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm, I was not fast at getting my territories, folks, at all. I mean, I've had them a while, but I'm just now getting them up. I should have already had these to tens and stuff, but I started spinning it on other stuff. I want to get my sand up to a six, and I just bring in the, the brig up to five, the other stuff up to fours. Got another ship I'm bringing up to a uh, Patagon, so I want to bring my medium holes up that I like. But I, I don't even know if I want to go to six on the brig, man. I really, I'm just not feeling it. But we're going to try it with that new new Leviathan armor as soon as we get it and see what's going to happen. But, but yeah, so that is the end game, man. And, uh, of course, within the end game, you're going to have a ton of new missions. So you're going to have your black market board here this is a job board no this is just a job board sorry folks and they update you know you, they have like a rotating list it's not always the same stuff but you will see it come back around pretty easy stuff pretty simple stuff for some XP then your bounty boards which is where you're going to usually find new content during the seasons as well plus your typical bounties that's here and then you're going to get your missions from you need an R these are always going to be not hard they're not simple but they're not hard it's like going in blowing up a, a privateer hunt so you gotta go it's like three waves of privateers you're chasing down to destroy and all and you end up you get 75 pieces of eight which doesn't sound like much but when you're starting with none it's it's actually quite a bit so uh, and then you have like these other little overture of havoc and stuff like that, that you can run and get certain types of materials that's going to help you out xp you know or as they call it infamy points or sp in this and uh, end game and you have all the old missions that you had before which would be kind of like the where we at here? blacksmith so for those of you who, who are new and just starting in here hammer and plunder strike the iron they still available I'm not seeing anything new come up same thing with Scurlock Rema they have some new new uh, wares for sale up there but there was a lot of people said they was unhappy with. They didn't get to learn the backstory and storyline of the carpenter or the backstory and storyline of the shipwright, you know, or the the, the storyline of. Well, this is this is an area where if you've ever played a RPG game and you come into a town and you have NPCs where you just come up and you're coming in later stages, you're just crafting. He's not got anything you want to buy and sell. You're just coming in here and crafting weapons and blueprints and and uh, and uh, you know different style weapons, armors, 
ammunition and stuff. That's what that's what this whole area, that's what St. Anne is about. It's a mission hub and it has your facility areas over there. And then of course your warehouse. And I'm sure we'll eventually see a new warehouse. In fact I wouldn't be I'd be surprised not to see a guild warehouse, like a big guild storage thing. Uh, and what that'll be is if people are just dumping crap in it, it'll all get sold off or whatever we got to do, chunk it, junk it out. But uh, understand, you know, there'll be like a, 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 a thing where certain types of items in there, okay, but if it, you find something in there that's not the right type of item and you're just dumping your garbage in there, it's going to it's going to get sold and just put into the coffers, man, is what, I, what we will do with it. We're not going to fill our, our inventory full of garbage, you know. But that, that'll be up to people to do. So I expect that that's what the expansion we're going to see is. Is we'll see a guild expansion for a warehouse. And that'll probably trickle down to all the people who guild, join the guild. You know, you'll get X amount of points for having a, you know, being in so-and-so's guild. And it has a certain level and all that. It adds point systems to it. You know, I, I foresee stuff like that. It's typically the way guilds worked if, you, if you've ever played RPG games. But yeah, so that is Skull and Bone, folks. I think the video turned out longer than what I had originally intended. But I hope you got a better a better view of what the game actually is compared to... There's just such... People have such hate for the game. And the game is, in my opinion, exactly... Now, we would like to see you know, you know more, more content, and we're going to get it. Of course, a lot of us like to see it come a lot quicker. Uh, you know, I'm still waiting to see what we get season two. We're just starting off, so they may have some really nice surprises in there for us. That'd be cool. If they don't, you know, we'll just have to get through it and wait for the new content to, you know, continue to emerge. But I think that they learned a lot. We learned a lot in last season what the more important commodities are. Commodities that seem like an everyday source commodity, but were hard to get. Casting sand, wood tar, stuff like that, man. And People are trying to grind it. So you see where you get the sinew string, which is over here. Then if you need to get casting sand to turn into dry sand, then you're going to need a ton of that to do a battle mark up to level 6. You're going to be hitting areas such as Machanga, Pimby, uh, Pimby Foundry, and there's one place right there, Njiwi. Nope. Yeah, it's got casting sand there too. So you'd be hitting casting sand. Now, when you look at this map, no one seems to understand this. I'm going to explain it here. Um, when you take a fort and you're plundering, it comes in stages. Okay? First stage, snuff. Second stage, casting sand. Casting sand again, then ivory, and then capital relic when you reach the end stage of that plunder. That's how that's doing that. You can tell how many waves you have on a mission based off of what kind of stuff it's got, usually. So you may end up getting these here, like the uh, nickel and the fine cecil, because this in here is a three deal. You get the nickel and fine cecil in the first set, and then you end up getting the snuff and the casting sand in the second box, and then a fine relic in the last. So you're going to see those, but you got to look and see what it is. It's going to be in wave. But if you want the, all the gear and the possible loot, you have to completely plunder the, the, the station. But that's where you're going to be getting your casting sand right here in the northern part of Africa, man. And uh, if you're looking for crude saltpeter, I know a lot of people are like, hey, I need crude, crude saltpeter in a lot of it because they're building their ships up, wanting to build. Uh, snows and stuff to pick up their cargo. We'll show you where to go and find that. If you come out of the Lock Penjar and come up through here, you're going to find all the crude salt peter you want. Just to go back and forth, back and forth. You're even going to get some wood tar, you'll get some slack, stuff like that. Not a lot of it, but just about every ship out here is going to have Gannet, or that, that freaking crude salt peter on it. That's where you're going, guys. And you know, they'll have two, three pieces on them ships sometimes. Or you can run around and you can bump and try to buy it around. Uh, you can come into uh, oh, where was that area at? You know, I, actually, I don't think you could actually farm that stuff off the ground. If I remember right, it was all in ships. Let's double check here. It's pure iron, it's durian. 
a back of iron wood. Yeah, then they had like fine ramey and stuff. So yeah, it seemed like the the crude saltpeter is mostly found right in just on the ships there. There may be some an area I never found where you could farm it. You know, raw. Let's see. That's more iron wood. So yeah, like I said, I think I think it's actually just on them ships. But this is the area to go right here, guys, and just farm that up. That's gonna give you all that you need. So. Appreciate you watching the video, guys. We're going to hop off here. Y'all have a wonderful evening.